Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 900. Yes, it's a milestone. Um, <laughs> the topic today is about um, actually two things that will change your relationships for the better, which is self-love and polarity. And I'll explain those more in detail and summarize some things I've talked about over the last few months so you can actually transform your experience in relationship and also be more whole at the same time. It's one of the secrets, by the way. Before I run into that and give you all that information, let me start by introducing myself and tell you about why I do these talks. Uh, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already figure that out. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I'm a big fan of the book because um, I wrote it. <laughs> it took me a while to get to that point. Um, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, um, thanks to some transformation in my own life, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and it's also what inspired these talks almost three years ago now. So they started in December, uh, almost, almost three years ago, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today is episode 900. It's a milestone. But it's still another one of these talks. And so I'm going to combine two things together today regarding polarity and self-love because I keep talking about both of these because they're fundamental in my, view, my book to be in a healthy way of living your life and a healthy way of being in relationship. And that's not just romantic relationships, it's all relationships. Most relationships, some won't change. I'll get to that one later on. So first of all, um, and by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I will at the end of the broadcast tell you where you can find the replays and that sort of stuff so you can catch up with my work. So, it's like any meaning, my name, which do I start with? Let's start with self-love first. Um, I've been very pedantic about this for the last three, four years now, about self-love being a primary focus about relationships because we don't do that oftentimes in relationship. Or I should say what we do instead is look to the other person to love us first, which is the codependent paradigm, which I'm very adamant doesn't need to be the way you live your life. In fact, I believe this is my personal view, not the view of the world, that codependency is one of the worst things we can do in our relationships. Well, no, it's worse than that. But it's still tied to codependency. So when we love ourselves first, we remove that um, attachment, that investment, that need for someone to make us feel okay first before we start loving. And self-love is a very powerful pivot tool. Uh, um, pivot, the wrong word. It's a very, pa very powerful paradigm shifter, that's a good way of putting it, to have a healthy relationship with yourself before you have a relationship with anybody else. There's several things about self-love that people forget. First of all, people think self-love is so easy and it's so simple and it's so simplistic. If you think that, you have no idea, <laughs> let's be blunt. Because for me, self-love is a functional tool that we don't apply to ourselves most of the time. In fact, for men especially, I would say, loving ourselves is not something we do very much of. We have to be tough, we have to work it out, get things done. It's kind of the macho way of doing things. At least that's the way society has been teaching us for many, many years. Which bleeds into the, code, into the polarity piece. I'll get to that in a moment. So again, back to self-love for a minute. So when you do learn to love yourself as a primary focus, and you can do it simplistically, excuse me, simply, not simplistically, in a way that really works, you start to discover that your choices you make with other people transform as well. And see, the thing is, when you start loving yourself first, and I've talked about this as one of, the, one of the trainings I took many, many years ago, back in the 80s, in fact. One of the first ground rules we learned in the training, and I'm still learning it 30 plus years later, which is take care of yourself first so you can then take care of other people. But when it comes to relationship, we're trained generally to take care of other people before we take care of ourselves. But when we love ourselves first, we are taking care of ourselves first, kind of obvious. It means that when we give to somebody else or we involve ourselves in somebody else's life as a relationship, we're not looking for them to fill up something we think we're missing. The biggest thing we have this challenge in this life, I believe, is culturally speaking, because most movies and TV shows and love songs promote this, is that we're not complete without somebody else. You know, Jeremy Maguire in, in, that, in the movie, Jeremy Maguire said, you complete me. Utter bullshit. But it sounds romantic. And that's the thing is we think romantic somehow that some, this thing about being codependent in a more poetic sense is romantic, which is not true. Being whole, being self-sufficient, being self-reliant and loving ourselves is the most available way to be in a healthy relationship and it's the healthiest way to participate in a relationship, especially if the person you meet is doing the same thing. It can be challenging, by the way, when you love yourself first, 
because what's challenging is you can't you won't say yes to certain people you'd otherwise would have said yes to when you love yourself first you will say no to relationships that don't support you now some of you watching this i know because i've done it myself have chosen relationships that don't support us because we think somehow that we'll get something from it which is an error and approach anytime you think you're going to get something from somebody else where it's going to be safety support self-care um, taking care of you um, nurturing with different things the reality is you can give all those things to yourself first self-love is the <laughs> let's say the gateway drug self-love is the gateway mechanism to really start to take care of yourself on a whole new level than you've done in the past and when you start doing that it will transform every single relationship around you because if they don't treat you well you'll go I'm out and if they treat you well you'll enjoy more of it it's almost like a, a like a um, what do you call it? divining rod like you know the old divining rods that will, just seek, will seek out water same thing with love in a way when you love yourself first you'll seek out healthier relationships it's almost fundamental to that now put that on hold for a second I'll switch over to the polarity piece and I'll come back to this in a minute I think <laughs> this isn't scripted so bear with me so polarity first of all if you don't know what polarity is in the context I'm speaking it's the um, the yin and yang of relationship that is basically in the masculine and feminine um, spectrum so there's a range of expression that we have between masculine and feminine and this is independent of your gender independent of your sexual preference by the way but I tend to speak of it in terms of mass of male female straight relationships because that's what I participate in so you can apply this in your own life even if you're not in that framework but some of the languaging I'm using some of the gender terms I'll use may not fit you directly just to be clear so masculine and feminine polarity now this is this is the work that changed my life um, 12 12 and a half years ago um, back in 2007 it was because of some bad relationships that I actually ended up in this in this place of seeking this work which is so I'm grateful for what happened that's another lesson by the way about being grateful grateful for what happened before I'm not getting into that one now I talked about it before but I'll say for myself if I hadn't been for those three relationships in a row I had I would have had no clue that I was missing something I would have had no desire to seek out anything better and I would have no hunger to learn the stuff I didn't even know I was looking to learn from. I mean, when I discovered the masculine and feminine, not like discovered like it for myself, but when I found teachers teaching me about masculine and feminine polarity, it was like I just shifted to a whole new plane of existence. I was like, what is this stuff? Quite a kind of sorta. Of. But I was absolutely enthralled, hungry, and, and dived in, dove into it because I knew it was going to change my life for the better. So I've been very passionate about masculine and feminine polarity ever since. And I've got books I recommend, I have teachers I recommend, and I do dabble in teaching it myself. <laughs> Which is what they talk about. Um, okay. Just, sorry, just watch my connection shift from available to unavailable. I think I'm still talking to you. Hopefully it's still working. So if you're still watching, good. Um, so, masculine and feminine polarity. As I said, it's kind of like the yin and yang of relationship. Because the relationship, the way I frame it is, the relationship chemistry, what draws you together with your partner, is based upon how extreme or how far apart your masculine and feminine polarity is. Now, let me put that on the side for a second to say one more thing. We all carry both polarities within us, masculine and feminine, to a degree or spectrum or range. And we also move around in that. To simplify this, we all, re we, all of us individually reside at our own position on that spectrum from masculine to feminine. And generally speaking, because this is not global, Women generally have a resonance naturally somewhere in the feminine end of the spectrum, and masculine tends, sorry, men tend to reside somewhere in the masculine end of the spectrum naturally. There are, op there are exceptions to the rule, just to be clear, and that's also in straight relationships as well as gay, so that's, again, nothing to do with sex or sexual preference or polarity, um, sexual preference or gender, we have both. But what happens though in life is we tend to find ourselves putting on what my teachers would call shells or masks on top of those natural residences to fit in somewhere else. For women especially, in, and I've said this before, in the corporate world, I've said this as a, as a framing, is the business world was created by men for men and women have been trying to fit in ever since, which is kind of the truth of what's been happening for many, many years. It's shifting but not there yet. So all this has been happening, and I did a talk yesterday about the Me Too, com no, two days ago? Yesterday. It was Sunday. I did talk about the Me Too stuff yesterday about sexual harassment, which is generally propagated by men towards women. Not all, but sometimes, because there's a disparate, there's an, an, an um, what's the word for it? Imbalance. That's a pretty word. 
in the business world that's still not cleaned up. It's changing because more women are saying enough and more men are saying enough and more men are standing up for women as well, which is what my mission in life as well is about. So let me back to relationship. So again, the more extreme the polarity of masculine and feminine in the relationship, the more chemistry, the more attraction, the more sexual joy there can be. As I said, we tend to wear masks and shells that put us into different places in that spectrum, so we may not be at our best or most extreme difference with our partner when we want to go to bed. This is one piece I'm talking about, by the way. And the way one of my teachers put it, which I loved, was the idea is that if we reside on a spectrum, so say for example, um, one end of the spectrum is 100% masculine, just going wrong, which way I'm doing this, left side. 100% of the spectrum is feminine, 100% of the spectrum is masculine. We can't be more than 100%. So if we're somewhere in between that, which we all reside in, none, I think almost none of us, very, very few of us, are actually 100% one or the other. We're somewhere in the, in the middle of that. So we'll be, a, we'll be like a 70-30 um, split, or 60-40, 80-20, 45-55, whatever that is, where we're trying to naturally reside. So two things happen. One is we don't reside at the end of the spectrum fully. And secondly, we tend to find ourselves uh, having more fluidity to move within, both men and women, to be where we need to be in life. Some, some simple examples when you're driving whether you're a man or woman male or female masculine or feminine will tend to be in the masculine because we're going in a direction it's kind of a it's kind of like we put that on to that for that part of the journey in a lot of business careers it's a masculine driven world as i mentioned so the recognition is when we come home and when we're disengaged we want to reside back to where we naturally are so doing things that restore our natural polarity is important so okay, i'm giving you two things i'm realizing now so first of all Ladies, if you're feeling that you're out of alignment with your feminine because you've been too much doing masculine things all day, then do things that restore your feminine energy, whether that's yoga or dance or bubble baths or shopping or spa treatments or chatting with your sisters. All of these little things, which sounds simple, are potent ways to get back to your feminine. Men, if you've been out of alignment with your masculine for whatever reason, maybe you've been taking care of someone's baby or you've been uh, doing something else and I'm what that be. <laughs> I'll come back to that in a moment, I think, if I remember any. But the thing is, when we're, in it, when we're out of line with our masculine, the way to get back to masculine is doing masculine practices. So going playing sports and competing, or go for a hike, working out in the gym, um, going driving, puts us back in our masculine. So we as individuals can come back to our natural polarity. But as I said, none of us, generally speaking, are 100% one or the other. So when it comes time, when it comes time for intimacy and sexual connection, one of the things that I have been taught that I love and I recommend, so I'm putting it out here, is from my friend Satyan at Warrior Sage, is to put our energy that is not our natural polarity into our partner's hands. Now what that means and what that looks like is if you're, in, if you're at home in your relationship and you want to go to bed with your partner and have a great time, chemistry, and everything else, if you're both busily still trying to detox from the day of work, it's not easy to do. But if you've managed to shed all that stuff early and you want to restore the polarity of extremes, or I should say the um, and say this, the polarity of the dance to really work together, then there's going to be a point where you can really have a great time together. Again, restore the chemistry. And I've said this before in other talks, chemistry is not a one-time thing. Chemistry is renewable. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you, my broker. Thanks for, saying, thanks for saying hi. So to get back to that polarity extreme, the way that my friend, my teacher described, and I love this idea because we, we play with it in the workshop several times, was that the man and woman would stand opposite each other. And basically what the man would do would basically in his symbol in symbolically he would gather up all this feminine energy almost like he was rolling up um a bedroll for example basically he's getting all the energy up like as if he and it's metaphorical cause i mean um yeah metaphorical it's not physical because you can't do i don't know if you can do it physically but you're gathering all the energy up into a bundle of a gift that you give to your female your fem, your female partner and I give it to her for safekeeping she does the same thing with her masculine energy as in her in in her imagination so to speak gathering it all up into a bundle giving it to you for safekeeping what that does is it hi tony good to see you sir um what it does is it creates more polarity in the in the connection and actually what it does it restores chemistry yes chemistry is restorable at least in my book and basically what it does is that you can you're taking time out from your natural default way of being to create more of a um supercharged that's a good word connection between the masculine and the feminine. So when you have that place, you can play and dance and have a great time. 
I want to back up a little bit to what I said earlier because I talked to, in the head in the title about polarity, understanding it. So that's one thing to do for extremes for the joy of supercharging your romance, relationship, and stuff like that. But also, one of the things we forget to do is restore ourselves back to our natural residence, masculine or feminine, when we're stopped doing whatever we've been doing or being whatever we've been being. So for some of us, and this was my experience back in 2007, I didn't know there was a place to be in my masculine. I had no clue. I had done all this work for 25, 30 years at that time, spiritual work, teaching, psychology, everything else, and I had no clue there was a piece of the conversation I missed, which was masculine, masculine, feminine polarity. So my invitation recommendation to you is if you are, if you know your natural polarity piece, and for men, one of the challenges, for me, not for all men, one of my challenges was is I didn't think that masculine was different from macho, which is why I didn't want to be it. Because I had such a bad experience with machoism when I was younger, as I mentioned in another talk about being bullied at high school, I thought masculine was the same thing. So masculine, just to be clear, is a very different energy, different, different um, expression than machoism, just to be clear. Machoism, from my word saying it, is an ego-driven, me first, screw everybody else energy, whereas a masculine energy is heart-based. It's about delivering, serving, and inspiring other people. So, hi, Bonnie. Yes, please, please do watch the replay. <laughs> I know it's, it's something on the challenges of being on social media. Sometimes you have things like life interrupting you. <laughs> but thank you. I'm glad you're going to watch it later on. So um, what I didn't know at the time was that I actually had a way of being that I didn't really know I was expressing. And the thing about it, is it was a label, basically, masculine versus feminine. But I didn't realize I'd been residing more towards the feminine of the spectrum. So heart-based masculine is, yes, exactly, Mary. And that's the way I describe it. The way that one of my teachers put it was, that the masculine energy is like strong spine, open heart. And I love that, that not visual, but that feeling, because I could take it in. Because I was so not willing to drive from up here, because that was where I've been living my life for many, many years, being you know English reserved, academic type person, dropping into my heart, which is the work I've been doing for a long time, but not just dropping into my heart, but building a strong spine behind it, which is why I didn't do up to that point, was a transformation for me. And so I know now that the more men that claim, own, and respect their own masculinity, the more that we can have a conscious, caring, compassionate um, world around us. Because there are so many men in the world who don't understand this yet, from my experience, and certainly I was one of them, that the more of us that wake up to what masculine really is. And it's not about necessarily brute force, although so there are masculine men who are very strong. It's about a place of being. It's, and the way I've described it simplistically is having a love to serve and a purpose to live. And I think that is the most distinct, succinct, and, and simplest way I can say what masculinity really is about, is a, is a heart to serve and a, a, and a purpose to live. Women, ladies in your feminine, you can have purpose too, and you have open hearts as well, but it's a little different energy for feminine, because what feminine energy for me is, is a bringing together. It's an inclusivity, which is more of what the feminine energy is about, which for me is, is about this sense of sisterhood, but also about having compassion in a different way that we do as men. And I'm going to be careful because a lot of it is on both sides of the conversation. But when I was get to back to the titles, I was getting lost from there again. <laughs> is masculine and feminine? I keep doing what, okay. Right, I'm left-handed, so I flip it in my head. So masculine right side, feminine left side. Even though, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's why I keep doing that. By the way, it was like going back the other way because being left-handed, my dominant hand. I keep thinking that's masculine. So that's me. That's what also. That's, that's, by the way, that's one of the reasons why. And I, heard, I read this somewhere that left-handed men have had more challenge being the masculine than right-handed men because we don't think naturally or more with our left brain. We think more with our right brain, which is le right brain, left hand. It's all a bunch of psychology stuff. You can study in your own leisure. I'm not going to go into that now. Boy, so much to talk about today. So if you are not sure of your polarity, meaning not sure of where you reside on the scale, it's worth spending time on your own with yourself or seeking out guidance, teachings, other books, that sort of thing. One book, I, one book I recommend I'll mention in a moment, not my book, but I mention it in my book. It's a great book for men, but I'll mention that in a second. So ladies, your power in your feminine is actually transcendent above what I believe men are. We are, um, I can say this. The one, again, these are all, dis, all descriptors and, dis, and the way of describing how masculine and feminine is uh, metaphorically spoken. So. One of, my one of my teachers talks about how the feminine is, like a, is like, like a massive river, a torrential river, a river with great power, great force, and great energy. And it moves down through the, through the canyons and through the world. The masculine is the, is the river banks, 
whether it be the canyon or the rock face or, or the river banks. The masculine holds presence, energy, stillness. The feminine's movement, flow, force in that sense. The question then people say, well, which is stronger? Well, they're not, neither one's stronger than the other one except they're different. Now, in some points of view, it's like, well, the river, river can burst the river banks. But the thing is when the river banks are broken, there's no river anymore. So bottom line is both are powerful when we own them. And I understand more and more how the presence that I bring in my work with my clients and when I'm serving, where I'm serving, is my gift and my strength in my masculine, which I didn't know before. It actually gives me a deeper place to go because the final thing is being a man, being a masculine, turns out I don't have to do anything. It's a, it's a beingness, not a doingness, which is kind of the shift which I didn't know I could do that easily. But thankfully, I've learned. So the book I recommend for men, and ladies I recommend you read this book too, was by one of my mentors, that, the book's been out for 30 years, years at least, by um, my, one of my mentors is David Data, D-E-I-D-A. -E -E and he's got a book out that's been out for a long, long time called The Way of the Superior Man. I recommend it highly because it breaks down in simple terms, because sometimes we're simple as men, ways of understanding how we can be more effective as men and how we may have been holding ourselves back from being fully masculine, expressive men. Ladies, I recommend reading it because if you're a single woman and you're wondering what sort of man you want to be with, it can give you guidance about what maybe you've chosen in the past that doesn't work and what will choose better in the future. Um, another book I recommend highly by one of my other teachers, um, Alison Armstrong, is called The Queen's Code. And that's a great book for women to understand how they can be more in their feminine as well. And being a passionate student of both teachers, I recommend both books um, for different reasons. Um, what else was I going to say? So giving you that, so back to self-love for one last, to wrap this up, back to self-love for a second. I started at the beginning about that. The thing about this work is that when you start stepping into your authentic masculine <laughs> or feminine, Sometimes we forget about our heart. And that's one reason I keep talking about self-love as such a key because when we're busy doing, expressing, trying to be one or the other, it's like, remember to love ourselves at the same time. I, I'm adamant about this. I'm talking about self-love self -love a lot lately because I'm actually on a summit that my interview is on the 20th, which is, um, what's today, the 17th, 18th? It's coming up this week. So um, I'll put a link to the summit in the comments. You can check it out for yourself because I've been kind of excited to hear my interview. I haven't heard it yet. But the thing about self-love is it's a pivotal piece in our lives that we forget to do. I keep saying that the challenge we have in life is we're doing, 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 we're forgetting how to be with ourselves. And self-love is a methodology, a tool you can love yourself with. I actually have a, me a guided meditation practice that I sell on my website, or on my website right now is offline tonight. <laughs> Perfect timing. But if you message me on social media, I'll, send, I'll figure out how to get it to you so you can get it. Um, it is an investment, just to let you know. Um, but the meditation, sorry, the masculine and feminine stuff, I've given you two books I recommend highly. Um, if you want to reach out to me and talk to me, message me over social media as well. Again, because my site's down, I can't give you all the links I usually give you. But I am, I've got three things I want to mention to you. So first of all, self-love. Message me about that if you want that guided meditation. It's audio meditations, AM and PM with a guidebook um, that I, do, I sort of downloaded and, and expressed. Sounds good. <laughs> you messaged me for that. Secondly, um, I have, starting this Friday, I push it back because of Mercury Retrograde, which does go direct on Thursday. Not, not necessarily I believe in it, but I don't want you know, don't, don't to scorn the gods. So it starts this Friday, not last Friday, and it's called Thriving Through the Holidays. It includes my self-love practice as a gift. So if you do sign up for that, you can actually get that as a gift. So message me about that too. Basically, it's a two-month journey of support through the holidays. For some people, you don't need that. For some people are like, please, I need support through the craziness and stress and the family stuff during the next two, next two months. That's my offering on that. And uh, if you want to reach out for support, message me. Um, if this makes sense to you, I hope it does. If you have any questions about it, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And if you want to reach out for support, you can message me on my social media. If you haven't seen my, book, my broadcast before, because you may be watching this on YouTube, I'll tell you where you can find them. And you can also message me on either platform. Um, in fact, I think, yes, on YouTube, you can actually email me from there. There's a, there's a way to email me directly that keeps it working. So, I hope this makes sense. That's kind of a sort of a dual, broadcast, dual teaching thing there, so I hope it landed for you. So um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Um, please like my page and the, and the broadcasts are there, although Facebook has been, it's been a bad boy. <laughs> it doesn't show all my broadcasts, it shows some of them, for some reason not all of them, but they are all out there somewhere. However, I have a backup, thankfully, on YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is barry's, excuse me, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, 
um, you can subscri subscribe to my channel and there's a playlist on there with called Messages from the Masculine where all of my broadcasts are listed from newest to oldest all the way back to number one, which again is almost three years ago now. It's actually funny, I started watching some of my early broadcasts and I'm looking how far I've come and also how far I haven't <laughs> because some of my stuff is still core messaging for me, so I'm grateful for that. So again, message me if you want any help, put comments below if you want to reach out for support, however you want to do that. Um, I invite your comments, questions, thoughts about what I said. If anything triggers you, let me know that too. Um, messages to support and to inspire, and hopefully this has done both of those for you. My utmost, um, or my, my, my single request I say every day is please take care of yourself. That's my invitation, that's my suggestion, that's my encouragement. It's my reminder to myself too. So with that, I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as again, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.